Using DB drop for length sizing, that doesn't work very well. We already talked about that in video number 33. Today, I'm gonna kill off DB drop for height sizing. Dad, you killed it? Oh no, sweetie, it's just sleeping. In a previous video, we talked about the six dB drop technique for length sizing. This is where we moved the transducer back and forth, found that hot spot or peak in the middle, and then marked each position on either end where the signal dropped by half. Now this works on ideal reflectors like side drilled holes, but not so well when we get to real weld flaws. On pretty much every job, you have to measure the length of the flaw, but not always the height. If you do have to measure the height and you try to use a DB drop technique, just like for length, it doesn't always work. I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna wait to the end of the video to give you the big reveal. At the end of the day, the best way to measure the height of a flaw is using tip diffraction techniques. Sometimes you can't get tip diffraction signals. That's gonna depend on the type of transducer you use, the shape and orientation of the flaw, maybe the thickness of the weld you're inspecting. In those cases, maybe all you have left that you possibly can do is a DB drop technique. Point of the video is not to maybe completely kill off DB drop, but it's really just to get us all to realize that when we're doing DB drop for height sizing, a lot of the time, all we're really doing is doing a pseudo beam profile and not really measuring the flaw. Let's take this three quarter inch steel block. It's got a two millimeter and a four millimeter notch on it. I'm gonna put it down here and we're gonna take this five megahertz half inch transducer with a 45 degree wedge. I'm gonna put it down here and I'm gonna shoot through the block and I'm gonna hit that two millimeter notch on the other side. I'm gonna draw that echo dynamic nicely. Now, if a DB drop technique was gonna work for the height sizing of that notch, then when I flip the block over and do the four millimeter notch, we should expect that echo dynamic is gonna be a lot different, right? Here's the four millimeter notch and when I run the probe back and forth after we've auto 80 would that, you can see that the echo dynamic is almost exactly the same. That shows you there's no difference between the two millimeter and the four millimeter notch for the DB drop on this because really both of those notches are smaller than the beam width. So we're really just doing a beam profile. But wait, there's more. There's a tip diffraction here, and that's really what we should be using to size it. So we'll take the transducer, move it back and forth. You can see the little tip way out in front. I'm gonna take the gain, turn that up so we can see this. We'll move the gate over here so that we're only measuring that tip. Move that back and forth till it peaks, which is right about here. I don't really care about the amplitude. I just care that I see it peak. We'll see what our reading says. It says, gate one, true depth, 15 millimeters. The thickness of this is three quarters of an inch or 19.1. 19.1 minus 15 is 4.1 millimeters. It's pretty much exactly the height of this notch. And even on the two millimeter notch, I can still resolve a tip with this transducer. We'll add a little bit of gain right here. We'll move this back really slowly and you can see that tip peaks right about there. Our gate says 17 millimeters, 17 to 19.1 is 2.1. Again, we're right on the money. If we move from conventional UT to phased array, the same rules apply. Here we've got a root breaking crack. I'm gonna move the angle cursor and peak that corner trap signal. And here, right away, you can see the corner trap signal does not intersect the back wall perfectly like we might expect it to do on a notch. And that's how real weld flaws work. You can't assume a crack is straight vertical because a lot of the time they aren't. And the signals are just not going to line up as nicely as they will on machine notches. Here, I'll move the angle cursor a little bit up. We'll find the point where the signal drops halfway and you can see it really undercalls the height of that flaw. If I turn the gain way up, or in this case, lower the pallet level and then identify that top tip diffraction signal and move the cursor there, you can see the height of that crack is much, much more than it was with a DB drop technique. Using DB drop techniques for height sizing is generally unreliable. You should be using tip diffractions whenever you can. If you can't get tips, then you probably have to use a DB drop, but remember, you're probably not measuring the height of the flaw so much as you're just doing a pseudo beam profile. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.